Good evening and welcome to a new day. My name is Daphne Clark Hudson, I'm your host. I'm a life changer. I work with individuals to tap into their authentic selves and by so doing are able to live their lives with purpose and passion. Joining me for this episode is none other than the small business guru himself, Mr. Andrew Morrison from New York. Andrew, welcome to a new day. Thank you so much for having me, Daphne. Would you please take this opportunity to introduce yourself to the viewers? Sure. Once again, my name is Andrew Morrison. I'm the president of Small Business Camp. And I have the uh, honor, the privilege of being able to work with everyday individuals, helping them turn their passion into a profitable enterprise. And I do that by delivering a two-day, very intensive small business boot camp. We can walk in on a Saturday morning with just an idea and by Sunday night, you have your website done, a press release, a direct mail campaign, a package for investors, everything you need to build your business in 90 days. You have it done. And then we also give you 90 days of follow-up coaching. So every week, I'm on the phone with you, encouraging you and inspiring you to higher levels of success. Thank you so much, Andrew. Andrew, we met uh, maybe five, six years ago because we um, both belong to an organization. And I've, so, I've been so inspired by your commitment and diligence by which you work with all the people. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into all of that. And for the viewers at home, we do have some audience with us this evening. So this is the second time that you will see some audience participation. We had that back at Christmas time when we had a show uh, with the rabbi and the minister talking mm -hmm. about why we believe what we believe. And we had some very, very um, strong audience participation. Andrew, I, I know that when you went to school and went to college, you did not go with small business in mind at all. Right. You actually did um, electrical engineering. Yes, yes. So how, how did you end up being so, so devoted and committed to small business? How did you make that transition? Well, I tell people that you really want to remember your calling. And so everybody is called to do something wonderful and something unique. And oftentimes, we get caught up in jobs, not the perfect fulfillment of our divine calling. Mm -hmm. And so what you want to do is understand the distinction between your talents and your gifts. And so I was gifted with a sense of discernment, a high degree of intuition, and also the ability to consume large amounts of data mm -hmm. and be able to offer a workable solution. Mm -hmm. And so what I decided to do was to find a cause, a project, a business that really supports my calling. So my calling is really to inspire, to educate, and motivate others. But my engineering background still shows up because as an engineer, we don't simply look to build a bridge and it's a maybe it's gonna work. That's right. It has to, it has to work. That's exactly. And so I, exactly. I, I take that same engineering approach when it comes to helping our entrepreneurs. And so we also need to understand that nothing is actually wasted in life. That's right. And so even if you spent, you know, some time working as a social worker, mm -hmm. now you're looking at uh, building a business, mm -hmm. all skills are easily transferable. That's right. And what you may find out is that you may feel as if you're going through circles and going around and around right now, mm -hmm. but once you get to a high level of success, you look back and see it was actually a straight line. That's right. It was a journey. Right. You know, right. each of us in life, we have different journeys. We travel them differently. But as I tell people all the time, what are the lessons that we pick up? What are the lessons that we learn on life's journey? But now the key thing about lessons is that uh, lessons come in a wrapping, okay? Mm -hmm. So a, le a lesson is actually a gift, mm -hmm. and the gift is a tremendous blessing. That's right. But now how is this gift wrapped? Yeah, exactly. I want to suggest you the gift is wrapped in pain. Mm -hmm. uh, the gift is wrapped in setbacks. The That's gift right. is wrapped in tears. That's right. And remember that the wrapping is not the gift. Exactly. And so exactly. oftentimes people run from their blessing, they run That's from right. their gift, mm -hmm. because they're afraid to embrace their pain. That's right. And so I want all of our viewers to understand the power of honoring your pain. 
pain. Exactly. And so once you honor your pain, then you're able to choose peace. That's right. Then you're able to ask the question, what's the real blessing behind this? That's and what's right. the real lesson? And That's then you're right. able to begin to receive the gift. That's right. And so never run from your pain. So if That's you look right. at someone like an Oprah Winfrey, her success is based upon her transforming her pain mm -hmm. into tremendous power. That's right. And so there's somebody out there who's very powerful, but they're going through some pain. Exactly. And the operative word is through. As long as you can go through it, exactly. it will enable you to become more successful wow. at the end result as well. Well said. You did mention um, briefly, Andrew, about the Small Business um, Booth Camp. How did that come about? How was that founded? And why a small business booth camp? Right, it really came about from my own frustration in terms of seeing entrepreneurs go to seminars. Um, they're motivated, but I checked back with them a month or two later. They haven't really taken action. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I have the privilege of traveling around the world. Right now, I was recently in Nigeria training mm -hmm. a thousand entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. People look at me as a motivational speaker, mm -hmm. but I really consider myself to be an activational speaker. Mm -hmm. You know, I really help mm -hmm. people to take action mm -hmm. when it comes to um, having a more powerful and compelling lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so, what I've realized is that in order for me to get someone to take action, I need to give them a very intensive environment where they're spending two full days with me, you know, eight hour days mm -hmm. where we're actually working on building their dreams because what's happening is there's something holding them back and the outside world tends to have its own influences that cause them to forget what mm -hmm. their calling is. And so by being in an immersive environment, it's a very supportive environment, we're able to give them all the tools to take the next step toward living a life of passion, a life of commitment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You speak a lot, um, Andrew, about underperforming Asset. Yes. Would you like to tap on that a bit now? Right. So um, I've discovered I can help anyone increase their sales in 90 days mm -hmm. by having them first take a look at their underperforming assets. And mm -hmm. I trust everyone has a pen out there. I'm going to give away some great advice that's absolutely free. Mm -hmm. you know, folks pay me thousands of dollars to get that. and uh, yes. people need to you know, grab their pen mm -hmm. and uh, write these concepts down. Mm -hmm. And so your underperforming assets, um, um, they consist of three areas and they all begin with letter R. Mm -hmm. uh, the first R is your results. Mm -hmm. Okay, take a look at your past results. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's an asset that you may be running away from, a good result or even a bad result. Mm -hmm. The best ex example I like to use is an uh, example of a lawyer who was so ashamed that he had to declare bankruptcy, he decided to start a, a consulting practice helping other high net worth individuals deal with the stigma of bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. and he ended up making more money as a consultant than he did as a lawyer. That's an example of using your past results or your past experiences. And so wherever you're working right now in a job and you've got three years of experience, that's an asset. Mm -hmm. you know? And we can package your asset differently, make it into a book, make it into a CD. Mm -hmm. That's how to turn your past experiences, your results into cash. Mm -hmm. The next R, which is my favorite, is your relationships. Mm -hmm. All right? People often underestimate who they know or who somebody else knows. And so I help my clients make a list of everyone who you know and understand the depth of those relationships because ultimately, you know, business is about relationships. Oh, yes. And all money transfers hands for one reason and one reason only. I want people to write this word down, is based upon trust. Mm -hmm. And so everything you do in business is about establishing trust. Mm -hmm. And so if you simply go back to your past relationships, that's a wonderful way to begin to, st you already have trust there, mm -hmm. that's a wonderful launching pad for your business as well. Mm -hmm. And so the first R is your results. The second R is your relationships, and the third R consists of your resources. Mm -hmm. And so what are some of the tangible products that you own um, in your garage? You know, eBay is a multi-billion dollar oh, company yes. mm -hmm. that was built around a concept of underperforming resources, mm -hmm. that there was, quote unquote, someone else's junk was someone else's cash. Sure, sure. That's right. And so I suggested there's somebody out there that has a storage room, a garage filled with products that they can turn into cash. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. your three underperforming assets are your results, your relationships and also your resources. Andrew, in in um, in your everyday walk of life, you have um, encountered thousands and thousands of uh, entrepreneurs or um, small business owner across the world. What are some of their greatest fears that holds them back? Well, you know, all of us have um, the two things that's holding all all of us back is either fear or guilt. Mm -hmm. fear or guilt and, and so I want people to ask themselves you know what's holding you back and there's a whole concept called emotional layering so anytime you feel an emotion ask yourself what's behind that emotion mm -hmm. what's behind that emotion and you'll see it's either fear or guilt and so what we need to do is need to redefine certain words certain terms because I want to suggest to you that every emotion you feel is the right emotion 
but it's actually the wrong label. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted us to do a Prince. You know, uh, Prince changed his name, was an artist formerly called Prince. Mm -hmm. And I want, I want you to change that emotion called fear. Mm -hmm. I want you to change that to potential energy. Right. That's what fear really is. Um, mm -hmm. So fear is actually giving you energy, telling you something wonderful is about to happen. But the reason why that wonderful thing doesn't happen is because you won't release the energy. So let's imagine a, um, um, a space shuttle. Before the space shuttle blasts off, it begins to shake with all this great energy. It won't blast off until the clamps become released. Mm -hmm. And so there's something you need to let go of. Mm -hmm. That's what allows you to transform your potential energy, your fear, into kinetic energy, which actually represents um, motion. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to fear, we need to understand that um, courage is your ability to act in the presence of fear. And so, you know, I'm trained in martial arts, and I've been in certain situations where I have to act very, quote unquote, courageously. Mm -hmm. And people say, why, Andrew? You know, I was kind of brave of you. And I said, listen, I was scared too, but my That's only right. difference is that I'm trained on how to act. Exactly. I wasn't hiding behind the sofa. That's right. And so, that's right. And so that's a power of training. That's why I want, I want to commend you on having this program. Because you're all about educating people, training yes. people in the face yes. of fear. How do you begin to take action? Yes. And it's really all about training. Mm -hmm. And the other emotion that's holding all of us back is actually guilt. Mm -hmm. And so fear exists in the future, mm -hmm. you know, filled with anxiety. Mm -hmm. Guilt exists in the past. And people tend to be caught up in the past over guilt or they're caught up in the future, over anxiety, over fear. Mm -hmm. And so what you want to do is to look at your past and you begin to forgive yourself. And so what's the opposite of guilt? Either somebody is guilty or they are what? Innocent. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so people want to understand that you're not innocent. Forgive yourself, forgive others, and most importantly, learn to forgive your parents. Exactly. All right? exactly. Because then you're able exactly. to move on. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, do we have any questions from audience? I know some of the audience people are leaving. Anyone in the audience have a question? Not yet, thank you. Okay. I'm not sure how many minutes we have remaining in this episode, but I just want to let the viewers know that you are out for a wonderful treat because we're actually having three episodes with Angel. And we just want to summarize episode one. I think, what sure. are some closing thoughts? Sure. Um, first thing, I like people to honor their pain. Mm -hmm. I want you to choose peace. I like people to remember their calling. I, I didn't say find it or That's try right. to figure out. It's something you need to remember because I believe we live in a land of forgetfulness, we forget mm -hmm. what we're called to do. Mm -hmm. also want you to focus on your underperforming assets. Mm -hmm. That's the fastest way to begin to build your business mm -hmm. is take a look at who you know, your relationship. Mm -hmm. Take a look at your past results and also examine carefully your past resources as well. You said something important, Andrew, about remembering your calling. And for some people, they are, they are probably viewing and they're saying, how can I remember something that I have not yet identified? And how could you help them to identify their calling? I help people identify by asking them who talked them out of it, mm -hmm. okay? So everybody had a dream, had a passion. There was something you wanted to do as a child, but somebody convinced you not to do it because you can't make money doing that. You, know? mm -hmm. you can't really make a living. And they're right, you can't make a living, you simply live a living. Exactly, okay? exactly. So, so start exactly. trying, right, so start trying to so make right. a living. Mm -hmm. And you really understand that, you know, if, you, if you're called to do something, that same God that called you to do it will also equip you as well. Exactly, All right? exactly. And, and so basically exactly. you need to begin to trust more mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. begin to not simply um, have faith, but move from having faith mm -hmm. to having a knowing faith. And mm -hmm. so you don't say, I, I wouldn't say I have my faith in, in my grandmother. I know my grandmother. Exactly. And so you need exactly. to know um, what you're called to do. And your first, right. uh, also right. what you want to do mm -hmm. is what are the things that you've been gifted? You know, mm -hmm. um, understand that people look at me as a talent, as, as a gifted public speaker. Mm -hmm. I'm really talented. A talent is something you have to work on. Exactly. A gift is something you were given freely. Mm -hmm. And so there's some mm -hmm. gifts that you possess, That's and right. those gifts will give you clues mm -hmm. as to what your calling is. And so, mm -hmm. you know, if your friends are always uh, um, complimenting. Uh, complimenting you on something, mm -hmm. that tends to be a clue for what your calling really is. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the real question is why are you running from it? Exactly. Because exactly. something is talking you out of it, and the world is talking you out of mm -hmm. it. And I want to give you, ultimately, and my clients have a hard time believing this, ultimately I give people permission to succeed. Exactly. <laughs> because you know something, nobody's Andrew, giving you permission and giving you a step-by-step -step plan on how to get there. Yeah, and I, I think that women have a bigger challenge right. accepting permission right. to succeed. Men go out there and they just right. do what they have to do. 
We women, we look around, we go, we ask this person, we ask the other person instead of listening to our hearts. Most of my clients are you female, and, yes. I, and I have a special, I guess, um, ministry mm -hmm. in working with uh, women. I've been delighted to be, you know, the only speaker at all women's conferences. You know, I'll be one of only three men speaking at the Essence Magazine, mm -hmm. Women Who Are Shaping the World Conference. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. I, and I'm very direct in dealing with women. I mean, I, right. mean I stop certain behaviors, so I'm doing a major conference, and I would ask a question. And a woman would stand up, it never fails, and, and before she gives me the answer, she would say, I'm not quite sure, but, and I would say, stop that. Exactly. Stop saying, I'm not quite sure. sure. Give me the answer. You know, exactly. a man, we'll know we're wrong. That's and why we'll we stand just up, say it. Right, and we'll ego. give the wrong answer, exactly. knowing that and we're, we're right. wrong. Exactly, exactly. And that's all right. Right, right, because right. Because you're stepping right. out of your comfort zone. Right, so it, it's really all about conditioning uh, uh, women mm -hmm. um, to feel more comfortable in business. Yes. Even the way people yes. stand, even when, when you approach me. Mm -hmm. Don't stand toward the side, just stand shoulder to shoulder and be, and exactly. be more direct and, exactly. be, and be more exactly. confident. Exactly. And you know, um, as I talk to women, um, in my everyday walk of life and you ask them but can you remember when this start happening to you when did you get so timid and right. so fearful and <laughs> right, everything right. and you go back maybe to preschool or we call it in Jamaica infant school or whatever right. and you find out that that one time when they try to answer a question right, and right. somebody beat them down and right. they they never recover from that and right. I said sometimes Wake up and smell the coffee. You were three years then, you're four years. Exactly. I said, look on the woman you have become. Exactly. Put that behind you and just move on. Right. And just move on with your life. I mean, you know, uh, I tell people that the, uh, the child is the parent of the, the adult. Mm -hmm. And so your child is very powerful. It shapes the way you think right now. And so you now need to return back to your childhood mm -hmm. with adult eyes. Exactly. And forgive yourself and exactly. forgive others exactly. and begin to remember your calling exactly. and begin to move yes. uh, from that because that's when you become unstoppable. Right. You know, I've, I've done a lot of retreats and with women and it is such a joy to see a woman who comes in on a Thursday evening hurting so much right. going on right. and to see the bouquet of roses that leaves on a exactly. Sunday evening exactly. because uh, they have just evolve and they have just bloom and right. they have just healed from so much things and right. a lot of times they really don't know the baggages exactly. that they are carrying because they look and they figure that I'm the only one going through this but when they get together with like-minded people and say hey it's all right let me empty out right. you know right. let me right. just extract and empty out and just live the life the full right. life that I am so deserving absolutely you know it is so wonderful, um, Andrew, to be in your presence here. And I still don't know how many minutes we have remaining here. Okay. Oh, we have more than I thought. We still have 10 minutes. So okay. I think we could start this section off with the 27 keys. Okay, sure. To, um, to growing a, a business in 90 days. Sure, sure. So um, I, I mentioned some of the other keys earlier mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, remembering your calling. Mm -hmm. I also talked about taking a focus on your underperforming assets. Mm -hmm. uh, also, what you now want to begin to do is ask yourself a very simple question. Once you remember what you're called to do, mm -hmm. then you want to ask yourself, who else had a very similar calling and how did they make money? Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. it was Booker T. Washington, the Wizard of Tuskegee, okay. who said that um, success leaves footprints. And so there's always footprints that you can begin to follow when it comes to becoming successful in life. Mm -hmm. And so what you want to do now is ask yourself a very simple question. See, um, questions to me are more powerful than answers. Yes. And where you are in life is based upon the habitual questions you ask yourself. And so the new question I want to, for you to begin to ask yourself is, you know, who else had a very similar calling, a similar passion, and how did they make money? Mm -hmm. Because by following those clues, then now you have a project. Then you now have a business that you can begin to um, focus on. So, for example, I convince all of my clients, um, um, regardless of the industry they're in, to write a book. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at most people who are on TV shows, on radio shows, they all have a book. Mm -hmm. And so everyone listening right now, they need to do a book. And mm -hmm. I'll give you an example of a book mm -hmm. that I wrote. And this book I wrote in just simply uh, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a very simple book. And the mm -hmm. book is entitled 21 Questions That Can Build Your Business in 90 Days. Mm -hmm. And so what you want to do is, is to begin to take your, um, your content 
and put it in a different context. Mm -hmm. And so my content is business wisdom. Mm -hmm. I place it in a different context, and now I'm able to make some more money. And so why don't you open up uh, the book, and just turn to one of the pages, mm -hmm. and um, why don't you read one of the questions. So basically the book consists of 21 uh, questions. Questions. And so open up uh, to one of the pages and uh, read one of the questions. Question 11 asks, how can you find similar clients? Okay, good. And then what do you see after you read the question? Uh, what's next? At, what's right under the question? Comments. Ask for referrals. Most people don't. Okay. Separate yourself from the competition. All right. So basically, this book is simply filled with a, a question at the top, the space for you to write the answer, and the tip at the bottom. All right, so here's a perfect example of a simple book that I wrote in only 15 minutes. 15 minutes. And I've made thousands of dollars off of a 15-minute book. So, so my question to everyone who's watching us right now is, you know, do you have 15 minutes? If exactly. you have 15 minutes, you can begin to brand yourself as an expert because mm -hmm. money flows to the expert That's as right. well as top dollars. Mm -hmm. Also, what I did was I produced an audio um, CD as well. Mm -hmm. um, so my 27 keys to growing any business in 90 days mm -hmm. is also now an audio CD. Mm -hmm. So this is a 60 minute audio CD where I'm you know, going through step by step mm -hmm. and showing people you know, practical concepts, proven concepts that can also increase their sales as well in 90 days. And mm -hmm. so everyone out there, if you have three years experience um, in a certain topic, mm -hmm. I want to suggest you the first step I want you to do is to uh, find a niche. You know, mm -hmm. define a problem very, very clearly that somebody's having. Mm -hmm. Then I want you to begin to make up a list mm -hmm. of several different ways that a problem can be solved. Each of those ways becomes a chapter in your book. Each of those ways become a technique you can share on an audio CD. Mm -hmm. And so by understanding that process of first finding a niche, finding a problem that the niche is experiencing, also make sure the problem is a, is a problem that your niche is willing to pay for. Mm -hmm. Don't simply find the problem the one's willing to pay for it because That's that right. equals no money. That's right. And then begin That's to right. um, document ways to solve that problem. And also then finally get testimonials. Because what you say about yourself means absolutely nothing. What, right. uh, what others say about you means everything. That's right. So you want to fill right. your book, um, your tape, your website with lots of testimonials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, what we were continuing on the 27, the 27 keys to, the, uh, to growing your business in 90 days. Right. Okay. So we talk about um, developing products. Mm -hmm. You said anybody could write a, a, a book in right. 15 minutes because right. you have done it. Right. And it's amazing because a lot of people would think a book, right. they're looking for something right. big and 200 thick. 200 page book. 200 page, 500, 590 pages. But when you think about it, Andrew, very rarely someone is going to sit and read that book complete. Right. So why not give them a small book that they'll read and do a follow-up that you can have a second edition and you know that you're really utilizing right. all the information in that book. Yeah, I mean, um, I had a colleague of mine who's a real author. He's written 12 books. Mm -hmm. and he a real author. Right, right. And, and, and he picked up my quote-unquote pamphlet. He said to me, Andrew, this really isn't a book. I said, but did you look at it? He goes, oh, yeah, I looked at it. The questions are great. It was really helpful. I said, well, you idiot. That's the purpose of it. You know exactly. What I mean? That's why. That's <laughs> right, why. Right. Exactly. Right. That's the reason. Okay. Um, You're not, it's not that you're looking for a, a big um, fiction or nonfiction right, book right, that, right. for entertainment. And especially it now with, with this information age, uh, mm -hmm. we're overloaded with so much information yes. that if you can begin to condense things and compact it into mm -hmm. the most essential ingredients, mm -hmm. people won't actually want to pay you more money. Exactly. for the condensed version, but actually the long version, because now you're telling me these are some of the key points I need to focus on. Especially adults, Andrew. You know, I, I was in a, in a meeting once, and just out of curiosity, I asked for a show of hands of all the adults who had a library card, right. and there were like 30 people there, and we did not have 12 hands up that wow. own a ridicule. So it's it just affirmed to me that adults are not reading as much as they ought to. Because if they do not have a library card to get the book from the library, they are certainly not going in the store to buy a book to read. I mean, the typical uh, American uh, reads one book a year. 
It's a sad uh, it statement. It is sad. And the book they read is probably about the O.J. Simpson trial. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's probably it's, nonsense. It's crazy. Okay? Exactly. So if you read simply 10 books a year, if you read one book a month, that puts you in the top 10% of, of right. all individuals. That's right. If you, if you were to simply read 10 books on one topic, you then become the expert. Exactly. Exactly. And a lot of times, people don't understand how much education that they can get from reading. Yeah. You know, because as you say, now is the information age. There's right. so much out there on the internet. There, there's just so much information out there that one can really right. enhance their learning right, with. Right, right. We have another three minutes in here, and I know earlier on, and the the the, the viewers probably wondering why they're asking about time. We are just short staff tonight, so <laughs> we are really on skeletal, um, skeletal crew. And before we had asked you for some summary thoughts, and you had done that. But we have another three minutes remaining in this episode. How would you like to close this episode out? Sure. I would like to encourage people simply to take action mm -hmm. because this really isn't about knowledge. Um, it's really about you learning, remembering to take action on what you already know. Mm -hmm. And so the Latin root for uh, the word education, educate, doesn't mean to put in. Mm -hmm. Latin root eduari means to pull out. Mm -hmm. So there's something that's already inside you that I that's hope right. this first part help you to pull out. Exactly. To help you that's know right. it's not only possible, but it's also necessary mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, um, we have two minutes, Andrew. You are saying this so quick, so we, we still have two minutes. Okay, sure. Do, um, what's your two best points to close out this episode? All right. Um, what I also want to um, remind people is that it really isn't about you that what you want to do, if you want to be successful when it comes to marketing, you have to be out of your mind. Okay, you can't That's be it. in your mind That's and right. trying to solve a marketing problem or build your business. Yes. So something that I encourage our viewers to do is to go out there and begin to interview your prospects. Mm -hmm. Everyone should have some kind of a survey mm -hmm. where you can ask people several questions. And it's amazing, people will tell you how to take their money. That's right. But oftentimes we're so caught up in our business, in our, sales. In our solution, that you want to get off your solution and focus right. on the customer's problem. Exactly. Not only do you want to focus on their problem, make their problem appear larger. That's right. The larger the problem, the more money more that will come to you. All right? People buy aspirin when they have a headache. So I want, right. I want you to go out there and give your clients a headache. That's, that's right. You, uh, I know you are just so blessed at home. We are here with um, Mr. Andrew Morrison, the founder and CEO of Small Business Camp down in New York. And I just know that you are being empowered tonight and you're getting some good information to grow your business and you have been tuned into a new day your guide to personal empowerment we are on charter on saturdays at 7 p.m and on thursdays at noon here at home and comcast we are on on mondays at 7 p.m and on thursdays at 10 30 a.m and out in st louis missouri we are on on tuesdays and thursdays and we are looking to come to your city. Invite us. Mm -hmm.